All right, this is part two of the video. Uh, it's a 97 Mitsubishi 3000. We're going to be assembling the clutch now. Uh, I got the flywheel back from the machine shop. They did it. That's the new clutch and pressure plate. This is the new uh, clutch kit. Comes with everything pressure plate, clutch, straw bearing, alignment tool, grease to throw on there. And uh, we're ready to go. All right, I'm going to start bolting this thing on. All right, I got the uh, flywheel in position. I just got to talk down the bolts to 55 pounds. And I got this little uh, flywheel holder. Um, so when I talk it down, I can stop that flywheel from spinning. Let's see if I can get any light in here. And we're gonna start a little at a time, do like a star pattern on this. I think I'm gonna put an extension on this thing because this is a little close. So I'm not putting it all the way down, not talking it all the way down just yet. I'm just uh, snugging everything up for now. And then I'll put, go around and I'll put full force on the 55 pounds of torque on it. When, uh, I'm gonna, oh, that one went already. And now I'm gonna get an extension to make it a little easier to tighten these down. All right, now I got all of the screws in. I want to make sure that the alignment hasn't moved. I'm going to actually hold this up a little. Make sure we're, we're good. We got a little wiggle in there. There's no uh, no pilot bushing on these cars, so it just uh, sits in there. So and I'm just going to make sure she slides in and out, no problems. That's a little bit better right there so we're gonna just start snugging this down and you always want to make sure that you check that spindle that it slides in and out nice and easy because otherwise if that binds up then when you try to put the transmission in that's gonna bind up and that's not a good deal Okay, that seems good. I'm just gonna check this one more time. She slides in that good. Sliding it now, good. And as we're talking, uh, tightening this down, you'll see these fingers are moving in, getting tension on them.
then before I torque it all down, I'm just gonna snug these all up, check that free play again. I mean this spindle freeness. That's good. up here. Right, it's all snugged up. See how flat these these veins have come and our alignment's good. That good uh, slides in and out, no binding. And I'm gonna just talk them down to uh, 14 foot pounds and then try to put this transmission in. All right, we're getting this thing close. All right, jack up just um, another like half inch, Jonathan. A little bit more, hold it. Now push the jack in, straight in. Right there, hold it. Okay, now we're close. Now we have to get The drive shaft that's down there for the driver's side into the transmission first. It's getting there. We got the uh, transaxle in place. The thing that was holding me up, which I thought it was the, the spindle on the um, transaxle going into the clutch, actually was the drive shaft for the driver's side. It was not, since I have it disconnected from the motor mount, the engine mount to give it a little bit more play to go in and out, it wasn't 100% lined up. So I got underneath, slid that in, transmission slid right in. I got four bolts in, and I'm gonna put the rest of the bolts in and torque everything down and then we'll go from there and i got the uh the mount for the trans temporarily in there just to hold everything up because i uh, ran out of daylight the other night and had to take the jack down but there we go all right guys uh when you're putting the trans back in don't forget to put this uh ground strap back on on that bolt when you bring it in and this is that other bolt i was saying earlier when we disassembled it's got to go in here, so you have to go in behind the uh, manifold here, through this little window, and then into the trans. I'm going to try to set up my other tripod so you get a better look at this while I'm doing it. All right, I'm going to try the old tape trick. Try to keep this bolt in place. Well, I got to sneak it behind the uh, exhaust manifold here. gonna work all right get that snug in there try to pass it behind here try to find the hole there Luckily, give you this little this little window in the mount that you can see the bolt. Try to guide it in there. All right, we got it in. 
true. This is threading in nice, so that's perfect. All right, since I'm underneath, I'm gonna reconnect that bracket that bolts to the motor that holds the driver's side drive shaft up and in place. And I'm gonna put the rest of these bolts in down here for the transmission. Put the starter back in, because that's hanging out. And uh, torque everything down from underneath. I'll do, I guess I'll do underneath, come around and then uh, do like a star pattern, do half the have to talk um, down just to get everything snugged up evenly and then we'll finish it up and uh, I believe it was 65 for the two side bolts that one right there and the one that goes underneath the manifold and the rest are 55 I believe I'll check the spec when I get out of the car I'm just gonna snug everything up right now Let's see if I can put this light somewhere so you guys can see something I just gotta get Two bolts for the steering because uh, those two bolts were a little different. Yeah, that's them. They, the bolts for the transmission have like a gold tinge to them. And that's how I was able to tell the difference. And these two, just like a solid steel. I don't know if you guys can see that with the amount of light we got. And uh, these are a little skinnier and a little shorter bolt. So these are for the steering and these are for transmission. And the key thing with this is just to keep order in your bolt. I got uh, a lot of sandwich bags with Sharpies written on them where the bolts go. And for the transmission, I threw all the bolts uh, in a coffee tin to keep them organized. And, uh, you know, it's a good thing to video it. So this way, if you have any, as you're taking it apart, you can see how you took it apart. And just in case you forget, or if you have a, cell phone just take a picture uh, as you're taking it apart and that always helps in the assembly process I uh, don't know if we could see up there but this bracket here and you got to pick up the axle a little to line up those bolts I don't think I'm gonna be able I can't hold the camera I don't think and line these up let me try this is a uh, little tricky spot. Let's see. Ah, I got actually got one to start through it in. Getting it in there. The fun part is getting the ratchet in there because you don't have much swing with the clicker the shorter the ratchet the better because uh, if the arms too long it was I used my big ratchet in the beginning to loosen them up and uh, I had to use a smaller ratchet to get them all the way out because I didn't have the swing with it but I'm gonna need two hands to finish this up so sorry guys I'm gonna have to put you guys shut it off I'll talk these all down and then we'll shoot to the next thing This one here. And I'll tighten all of these up. And also, I found the fuel filter is right down here. And since I have everything out of the way here, I'm going to go to the auto parts store and pick up a new fuel filter. I got this car about a year and a half ago or so. And it doesn't look like that fuel filter has been changed in forever. So change that out while we have everything apart and then uh, we'll continue on our way all right everything's torqued down here on the bell housing and uh, I'm gonna start putting the um, pickup tube here for the uh, water pump back in I put a little antifreeze around the o-ring there to lubricate it a bit and let's see if we can uh, take the bolt out this is the bolt that holds it in place Put it back in so I wouldn't lose it. Try 
and sneak this back in. This hose out of the way. putting these bolts back in for the motor mount um, for the transmission and uh, the bolts go inside in between the uh, the body there so if you lose any of the bolts they fall inside and they're gone forever so I'm gonna do the uh, little tape trick I got that I use so often Just put the tape reverse it outside on itself so it's sticky sides out Stick it in the socket, stick the bolt in the socket, it holds the bolt snug in there so it can't fall out. And we'll do it hand tight for now. Snug that up. I got two in there already. I'm gonna put I put two in the other night when I started losing the light and didn't have enough light to for the camera and just wiggle it out so this way the uh, socket doesn't get stuck on the bolt. Alright, I'm going to snug the ones down on the inside here this way. This is all nice and supported. that down I think uh, the next thing we'll do we'll try to put this sleeve cylinder in place hopefully get the camera in there I'm gonna pull all the bolts out again I put them back in where they came out of so this way I wouldn't forget where they went I mean if you can it's just the easier way to do it otherwise you have a hundred bags with bolts in it And there's two more here. Four bolts all together. And I'll look right now, see if they're all four of the same bolts. Otherwise, I'll put these on top of the motor just to keep them separated. Uh, they look similar. Yeah, all four of the same bolts. It's all good. All right, I'm gonna get a little grease. I'm gonna move this sleeve back into position. I did want to order a new sleeve cylinder and I had forgotten to. And the local hardware store here does not have one in stock. So in lieu of waiting another weekend for this job, I am going to just throw this little old one back in place. And uh, you know, it's not that bad. Forgot to change it. We'll, uh, we will do what we gotta do. We got uh, everything tightened up. I changed that fuel filter. You guys can, I'm sure someone's got that in the video. Uh, I'm gonna put this frame support back in. And um, we'll move out and then we'll put the axles in and put this passenger side wheel back together. Oh, let's see if I can hook this light here somewhere where it's not gonna mess up this camera too bad. Alright, I'm going to torque these down, and then uh, we'll see what happens. We got one of these suspension bolts stripped out in there, so uh, we got a 3.8 standard bolt, and luckily, it's one of the ones. Right, let me see if I can show you guys. Oops. 
is we can get it from the top. So I'm just gonna nut and bolt it with the 3 8 nut and bolt. And let's see if I can get it in there and try to show you guys how I'm gonna do this. So this is that bolt. I got the nut and bolted now. A couple of lock washers and a flat washer. And I'll just tighten that down and it'll be good as new. And now that I got the frame support in, I noticed I was just about to put these wires back in. I had this uh, wire organizer on the wrong stud on the uh, starter, on the wrong bolt rather. So I just swapped them around. And then a uh, little 10 millimeter bolt here, pull this out and uh, we'll put that back in once I get everything tightened up. And uh, just wanted to make sure you guys got that in the right direction. I had that wrong before. I'm gonna tighten that all up and then we're gonna go to the uh, axle. Gear loop here. I'm gonna lubricate the shaft of the axle here. Since uh, it's gonna go into that seal, I'm gonna lubricate that seal a little and lift the lip on the seal. And then uh, I'm gonna put this thing back in. And this snap ring just snaps back in place. I guess I might need a drop light. And there we go. Now, just want to seat that. There we go. That's seated. All right. And I'm going to put a little grease on the, on the face of the spindle. Because the old one was. When I took this, had to change this axle out, it was frozen solid in there. And I uh, had to pull it out with a, put an eight inch puller on there with the impact gun to get it to come out. And get that little bowl joint in, which I fixed that up. Oh, let's try to do this without making too much of a mess. Slide that on. Slid in. Okay, let's slide that in place. Let's see if you guys can see that. I put the alignment, I chiseled the alignment up. So I just gotta line those two up and that'll keep the front end in, in alignment as it was before. Lock this up. Impact on. It's almost there. A little bit more in it. And that pin should be lined up. Let's see. There we go. And then we're going to lock this in and Move on to the next thing. All hey, right, coming into the home stretch here. The brakes are all together, the axles all together. I'm gonna put this linkage on and the uh, bolt to top off the. Uh, Transaxle fluids right there. I'm gonna do that next. I'm gonna get this linkage attached first, and then uh, I got the car pretty level, so I'm gonna top off that fluid at the same time. And one of these got bent during uh, install of the transaxle here. Get a Trusty pliers. Okay, pull that washer off. And I'll pull these two bolts out. And these have these uh, plastic uh, like spacer washers, so they don't fall out. Okay, now they have to. Um, 
go on either side of the opening. Sandwich in there. Same thing with this one. Sandwich them together. Move them back. Let's get this started. Started. Put that on there. I should actually. You know what? I'll trim this off before I get too much further. Okay. Electrical connections are on. Did the electrical connections there? Tightened up all of these wires. Really, the only thing we got left is the battery and the uh, intake and the mass airflow sensor. And I'm gonna fill up the trans with uh, some some fluid. I changed this. I changed this fluid uh, last year to uh, 7590 weight. And um, let me get a wrench for this. All right, it just started leaking out now, so we are full, perfect. That's what we're looking for. So that's where it is, and that's full. We're gonna let that drip a little, and then we'll kind of cap it off. Snip <sighs> that. All right, let's put this back in. Let me get the air filter. I better hurry up. Some rain coming through. Hopefully, I can get this done before it starts raining on me. I gotta put this in, the battery in, fill up the antifreeze that I took out, and then we're ready to make a run. We'll turn you around here. I'm just gonna flip this on the throttle body. Put this breather tube back in. I'll tighten this up in a minute. Let's get this to sit flat. There it is it down and don't forget to plug the map sensor back in I'm gonna tighten this put the battery in put the antifreeze in and then we'll uh, we're good to go hey right, that's uh, I'd say it took me probably another five and a half hours today it's with eating lunch and stuff um, and uh, probably total well, like 12 hours total job start to finish um, nothing was extremely difficult they so if you take your time mark all the bolts um, get a helper to help you take the transaxle in and out but other than that the whole rest of the job I did all by myself and that's the uh, first time I've done a front wheel drive and Worked on a front wheel drive transmission in a thousand years, so um, you know we'll go from there. I've done uh, rear wheel drive cars and Volkswagens, rear engine cars, but uh, these front wheel drive cars, boy, there's uh, a lot more to do with them. And uh, but it's nothing that difficult as long as you take your time and dedicate two good days to to do it. You know, it's, uh, it could be done. <laughs>